Well, <clears throat> good evening. Welcome to the online Bible conference, Bible Doctrines to Live By, a steady church in an unsteady time. Uh, I am so pleased, so excited with the way this week has gone. Uh, I'm, I'm really sad to see it almost over. Uh, here we are, session number six. It's hard to believe where has time gone, but we have had a, we have had a truly blessed We've had a, a wonderful week. I have been so pleased as I look at the, the comments. Uh, the last few nights, I've actually been watching it right along with you because, because of the weather, as I had posted earlier in the week. We have been pre-recording uh, several of these programs throughout the week, and so I've been at home in the warmth of my home uh, watching the program right along with you, and I've watched your comments uh, come in and uh, have commented back to a few of you. But uh, I am just so pleased with the numbers of people and, and the, uh, the way that you have stayed and watched the conference. And so I just praise the Lord for that. And here we are, like I said, night number six. Uh, in just a couple moments, uh, Matt will come in and uh, we'll share tonight from the Word of God. And then uh, tomorrow night, uh, we will wrap it all up. And uh, tomorrow night, we'll be live, back live again. And uh, I will be back tomorrow night and uh, just draw things to a close. So uh, if you're, make sure you're here. So you're here for all uh, six nights of the conference. And we're, we're so thankful again for all of you and uh, for your faithfulness to the conference through the week. Uh, let me again, as I do each night as we begin, just remind you of our Truth of Flame magazine. And if you do not receive that, if you're not on our mailing list, if you're, if you're here and you're only now discovering Bible doctrines to live by, I've seen some names this week on coming in of people I didn't uh, recognize. Uh, I, look, I would look at Susan and say, she, I don't know who those people are. And uh, so we are glad that we have some uh, visitors or people who are new to Bible doctrines. And if you are, we have this magazine that we put out uh, bi-monthly, bi and uh, it just, a uh, couple, some Bible studies are in there, and, uh, some things for the kids, uh, some news and announcements, uh, itinerary as we travel, uh, where we will be, where we'll be speaking, and uh, all of those kinds of things are in there. And <clears throat> so, um, that is there, and if you, if you uh, would like that, all you need to do is let us know, and we will bring that, uh, we will get that, you, we will get you on the mailing list and uh, send that to you. Let me just say, in this issue, this is, this is the current issue. We have one, what do you think? And I want to just mention this tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, this is something, uh, another uh, Bible, Bible conference that uh, we have thought of and thought maybe we could do that, and we might even do it, and at the same time, depending where we are, uh, broadcast it live. We'll be able to do that. But uh, what do you think? And this is what we're, this is what we're thinking about doing. We're, try, we're thinking about, for those people who camp, those people have tents, or those people have trailers, uh, we're thinking about putting together just a group, of, uh, a group, not a large group, but a group of, of campers, tenors, trailer people, and uh, do a little bit of a week of a vacation where we would uh, visit some places of interest and uh, do those kinds of things. And then in the evening, come back together uh, for a meal together and then have a time of Bible study, a Bible conference each evening as we close out the day. And uh, right now, all we're saying is, what do you think? And if you think that if you are one of those kind of people and you think that would be something you'd like to do next, uh, next fall, next September, early October, uh, please uh, just let us know right now and say, hey, I'm interested. And uh, we'll give you the phone number for Bible Doctrines in just a few moments. But if you don't get Truth of Flame, make sure you uh, sign up uh, for that. And then, as we always do, as we're on the air, uh, we'll have a special, and usually it is a sale that we'll take, uh, uh, give you a reduced price on a, on a book. Uh, but uh, today we've got, for this conference this week, we've had a really good special. And that is, we've had this book by 
Fred Lewis, Understanding the Bible and the End Times, very apropos to the day in which we live and all of the things that are being written on the internet and around across as far as the end times and the end is near. And, and I haven't seen anybody with a sandwich board yet saying the end is near, but I'm sure they're out there somewhere. But uh, this book uh, looks at the Word of God, how to understand the Word of God, and of course how to understand the Word of God rightly divided, and then apply that to the Scriptures and the end times. And so that is there. And then we also have this set of books by Pastor Ernie Green. These are a little uh, a study course on four books, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And those four books go together to make one of the choices. So you can choose uh, between Fred Lewis's book or these four books by Ernie Green. And your, the choice is yours, and the, the, the good thing is, they are absolutely, totally free to you. Uh, the book is free. We will send it to you free of charge, no postage, uh, no tax. Just, well, you will get this book in the mail, the book in the mail that you choose, and uh, without any uh, further expense uh, to you. But, you know, there is a catch. You knew there had to be a catch. Uh, the book is free to you, but you need to send me $1,000. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. The book is free, and all you need to do is, number one, watch the conference. That's all we ask. Just be one who watches the conference. And then number two, that you write us a letter and tell us what you thought. Uh, Tell us what you thought of the conference. Tell us what you thought of the speakers. Tell us uh, what you, uh, maybe uh, for the future, like I've said throughout the week, uh, this is the first, but it's not the last. And, and we want to do this more than once a year. I do it several times a year where we address different subjects and have different things. And, and so maybe you have a, a topic. Uh, that you think that would be a good topic to pursue and, and to look at the Word of God. Uh, for, uh, and so let us know that, all right? So what we want you to do, you can have the book free of charge if you watch the conference and write and tell us what, you th what your thoughts are of the conference. And then, of course, no postcards, please. Don't, don't just send us a little note and say, hey, I watched the conference, it was great. Uh, sit down and give us a little letter and put it in an envelope and send it to us and uh, we will get that and we will appreciate that. And then, of course, as we have say, Bible Doctrines is a printing ministry, uh, a preaching ministry, a printing ministry, and we have these Bible study materials that we, we uh, publish and distribute uh, just like those study books or uh, others. Uh, so those are there. We have a whole list of gospel tracts that we make available to, the, to, uh, to you for, to share the gospel with others. We have doctrinal tracts that, that talk, uh, teach on certain areas uh, of the scripture. Then we have seasonal tracts like for Christmas or Halloween or, or resurrection time of the year. Uh, we have those. And then we have a graded curriculum. And, and actually, Matt... Uh, is key to that. I, I, honestly, I would say today, if it weren't for Matt, there would be no graded curriculum department. Uh, just time would not allow that. But we are so thankful for Matt and the work and the hours that he has put in uh, just for that, and along with everything else that he does. But uh, we are so thankful for Matt for that. But we have this graded curriculum, and we have some new ones coming out very soon, so watch for that. I think uh, one is on the Bible, correct, Matt? Uh, and so uh, just, just be aware of that. And if you haven't uh, seen any of that, uh, all you need to do is call and ask us, and we can even send you a sample, or uh, we can send those to you. But we have our catalog is available, and all of them are in here, uh, along with all of the tracks, all, all of the materials that we have. They are all right here in our catalog. And you can have a catalog by simply calling us. This is 616-785-3618.
and uh, say, I'd like a catalog or I'd like to sign up for Truth of Flame, and uh, we will take care of that right away. Or you can go to our website at BibleDoctrines.org, and uh, of course you can sign up for Truth of Flame there, or you can request a catalog there, or you could go to the Resource Center, and all of the, the materials are there, and you can purchase them uh, off our online store there. And so that is there, uh, along with a lot of DVDs and teaching tapes. Those are there. Links to our YouTube page are there as well, where you can uh, see our Grace Central, which is, which is a lot of uh, Bible teaching uh, videos. And of course, that's growing. This conference will be there very shortly. And uh, others from other uh, churches will be there. And so just ch check out Grace Central. Uh, if you need to get in touch with us, you can write us at staff at BibleDoctrines.org. And uh, that is our email address. Uh, then, of course, here we are on uh, Friday evening. And uh, we've had a great week. But uh, our, broad our regular broadcasts, uh, Sunday, we have the Bible study hour, and we will be back Sunday evening at 5 o'clock uh, for that. Uh, then Tuesdays, we have Tuesday Bible time, and there we are going through the Word of God, Genesis to Revelation. We are in the book of Genesis right now uh, in a very quick overview, but uh, we are going through, uh, picking out certain things to look at as we go, but we are, it's called Unfolding the Word of Truth. And uh, so that is Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, right here uh, on uh, Bible Doctrine's Facebook page and soon to come YouTube page. Again, as we do all the time, we just want to remind you that when you come, if you're there tonight for the first time and you like what you see, uh, just like our page on there on Facebook and you will then receive notifications as to when we're going to be on with something new. The same thing is true when you go to the YouTube page. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, when you do that, you will receive notifications and that helps us and there's no charge to you for that. Uh, you're not buying a subscription to something. Uh, that is there. And then also there's a, a little bell often that is there and if you click on that, that also gives us notification uh, to send you notifications as they come up. So Facebook, YouTube, like us on the one, subscribe uh, on the other, and uh, you will receive notifications of everything that comes along. Just very quickly, uh, some things coming soon. Uh, we have other programming that we're going to do. I've been saying all week, right behind this wall behind me is uh, under construction Studio B, and we will be producing things there. And like I said, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but next week we will do our first broadcast from over there. And uh, that will be not very long, but uh, that will be there. And you'll be able to see that obviously it, this is under construction. But uh, we're going to do something next week for, uh, for that. But anyway, do pray for that need and uh, the need for, me, for equipment and uh, stuff. Uh, like I said this week, and again, you could pray about that, uh, we do have a need for some equipment. We need to add another computer, uh, at least one computer, a laptop, a, a, a more of a gaming style laptop, which is a little more expensive. But uh, if you could help us with that, we'd appreciate that. And when you send any gifts uh, to help with the broadcast ministry, just mark on it, broadcast, and 100% of that will go into the broadcast ministry. And so, and we appreciate that, and we appreciate your prayers, all right? Well, I think that brings me to the end of my time here and the announcements, and uh, I'm going to ask Matt if he'll come. <coughs> and we are going to have a word of prayer, and then I will turn it over to Matt. Uh, I'll tell you uh, right here before you and the world how much I appreciate Matt, his uh, fellowship in the gospel, his partnership in ministry, and uh, just the way that God has truly blessed him. And for those of you who don't know Matt, <coughs> Matt has one of the, uh, when it comes to choosing wives, he couldn't have chosen a better wife. She is just an A1 person. I have to say amen. Amen. Yes, and sir. she's I'll my daughter. Trouble. 
So Matt is uh, not only my partner in this ministry, but he's also my son-in-law. And we love Matt and uh, really appreciate the way God has used him and continues to bless him and use him in ministry. So Matt, let's have a word of prayer. And then I will get out of here and turn it over to you. Father, thank you to, to that, tonight for uh, your many blessings. And thank you for this week. We have had uh, just a fantastic, a terrific week. And we just thank and praise you for that, for those who have come and shared the word of God and uh, just the opportunity to fellowship with them and to fellowship with, with the saints over uh, the internet and to see the comments. We just, we are thankful to you. And uh, Father, we think now as Matt comes, as he opens the word, we ask, Father, that you would hide him behind your cross, minister through him, through your word, uh, grant to us wisdom and understanding, challenge us to be that steady church in an unsteady time. And we pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, uh, thank you. And it's good to be with you once again uh, in this avenue uh, online. And uh, just a little bit more on the, the graded curriculum. Uh, what that's for is it's for, well, different age levels. And uh, it can be used for Sunday school, for children's church, for Sunday night, for Wednesday night. Uh, and you can go to our, our website that he gave you, BibleDoctrines.org, and up in the, the header uh, is something called Store. And there's all sorts of, well, of, uh, all of the books and such that we carry are there. Uh, as well as you can go towards the right, and there's uh, different uh, choices, and one of them's curriculum, so you can look at it uh, there. i also remind you that this evening is Friday. Uh, well, beginning next Friday, we are going to start uh, just reposting uh, from our 2005 Grace Revival for Evangelism Conference, and so if you're interested in that, that'll be the ni next nine consecutive Fridays beginning next Friday. All right, well, let's get into the Word of God, and you can begin to make your way to the book of Romans. It shouldn't be too hard to find, uh, but we, our conference has been a steady church in an unsteady time. And in order for the church to be a, a steady presence in the Lord, uh, we need to focus on God's desire for our lives, uh, what He wants us to do, what is at the, the heart of God. And certainly, that would involve the obvious ones, such as evangelism, growth, uh, truth. Uh, we need to, to add to that, or we could add to that, righteous living and, and rightly dividing. Uh, we've heard from speakers this week on, on various uh, parts of this, the, of, of important vital issues. Uh, we've heard about passing it along from generation to generation, and uh, we've talked about evangelism and, and uh, a steady church and, and rightly dividing, uh, doing away with the storms of life and, and even the simplicity of Christ. But just as important, when we say church, I know my mind often goes to the service, you know, Sunday mornings and the programs and the people that are there and attendance, but I want to broaden our minds uh, and, and remind us that the church is not a building, it's not a program, uh, it is the people. Uh, and so I want to talk about, uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, one another, uh, what, the, uh, what the, the, that, even though we talk about the importance of evangelism and all those things, uh, that just as important is how we treat one another, and it will show the world an example of stability. Uh, and look, uh, let me not beat around the bush. Uh, the world done gone crazy. Uh, I mean, you talk about politics, and, and we have lost our collective minds. Uh, there is unrest on each side. We watched uh, this past year as, as cities were, were set on fire and, and storming this, the symbol of democracy. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we have a refusal to, to even listen and, and empathize with people. Uh, we have a virus that turned our lives upside down. Uh, we have misinformation that just abounds and is repeated and shared. Uh, churches have taken sides on things and split over, over issues that are, aren't even scriptural, uh, scriptural issues. And we have name-calling and, and it's judgmental. It has been a crazy uh, 12 months. Um, and I'm going to be real with you right now. 
uh, that the sad thing to me is the church has lost people due to differences of opinion. Uh, and it's even um, pe- Christians have turned people away from, by their actions. And so that's why I wanted to talk about one another. Uh, we need to be a steady presence in the Lord. And actually, uh, Paul uses the Greek word for one another. He uses it some 40 times uh, in, in his epistles. Uh, and so that should tell us that these statements uh, are important uh, and, uh, and, and certainly important to a steady church. Uh, before we get to the actual one another statement, so I want to lay a, a little bit of groundwork. Uh, and there are two truths that I, I hope we all already understand. But if you don't, uh, they are so important uh, to understanding these one and other uh, things. Uh, First of all, we need to understand the reality and the function of the body of Christ. Uh, Today, there is not one group of people that is closer to God than another. Uh, We know as as right dividers uh, that, uh, that Israel used to be kind of the mediator between God and the nations, and that's not true anymore. God has deemed us all under sin, all on equal level. Uh, and, and in this way, God can grace anyone who trusts in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ through the one and only mediator, Jesus Christ. And then to show his grace and his redemption fully, God today in this age of grace is creating a, a group of people called the church, the body of Christ. And I'm not going to ask you to turn there, but maybe write it down later and, and check it out uh, if you aren't already familiar with it. But 1 Corinthians 12 is an important passage regarding the church, the body of Christ. And in verses 12 through 14, we learn a few things. First of all, we learn that each and every believer in this age of grace uh, is is spiritually identified with the church, the body of Christ. Uh, There is no, uh, there's only, there's one and only one group, uh, the, the body of Christ. There aren't different levels depending on your contributions. I tell people there's not a platinum level and a gold level and a silver level and a copper level and a paper level or whatever it is. There's just the body of Christ. Uh, Second thing we learn in in 1 Corinthians 12, or that I want to point out at least, is that the body is divinely placed in order. Uh, The all-knowing God uh, has taken you and he equips you to function in that group. Uh, Jesus Christ is the head of, uh, over it all, over all other parts and members. And the parts of the body, think of your, your, uh, your physical body. Uh, your physical body, uh, unless something's uh, wrong, uh, it naturally follows the head. I don't have to tell myself to, to breathe today or to blink or to flinch. That's hardwired into your head, your brain, and the body responds. Uh, It's like the members have given control to the head, and it should be the same in the body of Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ being the head, and each member, no matter how God has placed us, uh, we should naturally, or we should be willing and voluntarily uh, follow his desire. Uh, We all have different functions, but we all have the same purpose, and that's to follow our head, the Lord Jesus Christ. So each and every believer is part of the body of Christ. God places us in there and equips us as he sees fit. And also, the third thing I'll point out is there's no hierarchy. There's no uh, distinctions. Uh, What exists is equality and unity. Uh, There is no special part There is no Jew, no Gentile, no male, no female, no rich, no poor, no educated, uneducated. We are all equals. No one is more important than the other, uh, and we all have the same complete position in Jesus Christ. The 1 Corinthians 12 passage also goes on to illustrate how this works practically. There's a few verses there in in verses 15 and 18. uh, It says, don't think you are less important than other parts of the body, because you are part of it, and you are important. Uh, Then, in 19 through 24, it says, don't think someone is less important than you. In other words, don't think that you're uh, you're the cat's meow, I guess, or you're the most important part. Uh, All are parts of the body, despite the task assigned, and all play a vital uh, role. And we also have uh, this verse back here, 1 Corinthians 12, 18, where it says, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And thinking of that, 
the, the body of Christ, the, the group of believers today, should function in a way that gives the, the more noticeable parts opportunities to, to thrive uh, and, and to, to, to function, and perhaps those less notable parts uh, it's the body is created to make sure that, that they are honored also and also giving room to flourish. Uh, for the body to function properly and effectively, every member must work together to bring honor to the body as a whole. And uh, I'm just, I have a quote here I want to read so I don't get it wrong. It says, the body of Christ was uniquely designed to serve one another as we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, even that teaching of the body of Christ should tell us how important it is to the church functioning as God has, has planned for it to function. So the, the, the reality of the body of Christ is the first groundwork that I want to, wanted to lay. Uh, the second thing I wanted to lay is the unity of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 4 is a, is, a, is a key passage in verses 2 through 3. Uh, it says, With all lowliness... And meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You aren't going to serve one another without the mind of Christ, created by the Holy Spirit. That verse speaks of humbleness. It speaks of, of suffering long. It speaks of putting up with one another. And then it says, endeavoring, striving, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit has already established this unity, uh, and you need him to, to help you keep this unity practically in ministry and in life. It's a unity we don't have to create. It exists, and uh, our imperative is to keep it, strive to keep it. Uh, we were created in this unity, and we are called to exhibit uh, this unity. Uh, another verse I think of, and we're talking about one another. Uh, Galatians 4, uh, I'm sorry, Galatians uh, 4, 7. Um, what this is talking about is, uh, well, let me just read it. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit lusts against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, um, I put some of those words in yellow because I said about that Greek word for one another. Uh, that's the word that's used there uh, in Galatians. Uh, but here it's not talking about what we should do with one another. It's talking about a conflict with, with, between two parts. Uh, it means we can't have one and the other. Uh, they are at, at odds with one another. We can't have the flesh working aside, we're working alongside the spirit. Uh, and, and actually, if I would have had you, you turn to Galatians, it's actually, I believe, Galatians 5.17 that I put the wrong passage there. But, um, yes, Galatians 5.17, so just ignore that. Anyway, but in Galatians 5, we have examples of this, this conflict with one another. So just listen. Uh, the difference between the, what the flesh will do uh, amongst the church if, if we're not allowing the Spirit to, uh, uh, to, to have its day, His day. Uh, but it goes on and says it, it, so that you cannot do the things you would. And then in Galatians 5.15, it says, biting one another. Also in verse 5.15, it says, devouring one another. Uh, 15 also says, destroying one another. And then in verse 26, it says, provoking one another. And again in verse 26, envying one another. Those are the things, if we aren't endeavoring to keep the unity, if we aren't uh, serving in the spirit that the flesh will cause. Uh, you cannot serve someone when you're biting them and devouring them and destroying them and provoking them and, and envying them. You can't have unity with those things in, in, in existence. Instead, the spirit will cause us to serve one another. And that's what Galatians 5.13 says. So unity comes when we are corporately displaying uh, the fruit of the spirit towards one another. And this is how the body of Christ is, is built up, uh, Ephesians 4.16. So uh, let's actually get into now those uh, one another statements. And I ask you to make your way to the book of Romans. The specific chapter I want to start in is Romans 12. And I didn't have you turn to too many verses yet because, uh, <clears throat> because 
well, we're going to turn to a lot of verses right now. And so be ready. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, do some uh, stretches to your fingers. Uh, do some, get warm, warm up exercises. But Gal- uh, Romans chapter 12, uh, and the first one another statement we're going to look at is members of one another. Romans 12 verses 4 through 5 says this, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. So in Romans chapter 12 here, we have a, just like we did in, in, just like we do in Romans 12, we have this metaphor of a body. And, uh, and it, we are very uh, familiar with our bodies. Uh, we know in order to touch something, we need to use our hands. Uh, you know, if we want to go somewhere, we use our feet. Uh, we know how each part plays. The knee bends, uh, gives us some flexibility. Uh, y- you know, uh, our eyes see, our ears hear, all of those things. It's the same in the body of Christ. Uh, we all have a, a part to play, and yet we are all uh, united. Uh, and here, Romans 12, 4 through 5, remind us that we are members one of another. We're not in, in isolation. Uh, but we're part of an important uh, group. And there are three important truths uh, in this chapter or in, in uh, chapters that are near uh, that, that help us understand what it means or what is necessary to be members one of another. The first one is right there here in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. It says this, For I say through the grace given unto me, uh, that every, to every man or every person that is among you not to think, of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. To think soberly. And that word is to be sound of mind. It's, it's, it's moderate. It's, it's a right outlook. Uh, and here in the context, I believe a good word to submit for it is a humility. Putting others first, bowing low, uh, making sure you understand that even though you're the pinky finger, uh, you need all other four, and the hand, and the arm, and the elbow, and the armpit, and all of those things. Uh, We all need to be together. uh, Just because you're the pinky, or just because you're the pointer finger, uh, doesn't mean that you're more important than the other parts. Uh, Humility. Uh, No member of the body should feel more important than any other member of Christ's body. You know, it's football season. And so I'm going to use some football illustrations uh, from football. Uh, the running back, oftentimes he gets all of the, uh, the credit for the runs that he, you know, if he breaks a, a big run or a long run uh, or scores a touchdown. But he needs to be careful uh, because oftentimes it's the blocking of the offensive line that creates that hole. Uh, or, key, or, uh, or even the wide receivers when they do their part who helps them get further down the field. Uh, So the running back needs to have a little humility and realize the importance of his teammates. So humility. The second thing uh, is in Romans 14, 19 that I'll point out uh, regarding members one of another. But it says this, let us therefore follow after the things that make for peace and things wherewith, wherewith we may build up or edify one another. We need unity. And unity is we're all on the same page, we're all headed in the same direction, it's a togetherness. And so every Christian, I've already said this, but we can't say it enough, should work hard at creating unity in the body of Christ. And it is only accomplished in the, by the Holy Spirit uh, working in the heart of individuals. Let's go back to football for a moment. Uh, another person on the team, or another position that gets a whole lot of recognition is the quarterback. Uh, But they don't do it alone. Uh, Sometimes quarterbacks get the blame for an interception, and it's really the wide receiver's part. Uh, And so there needs to be a a unity uh, between the the quarterback and his receivers that that he knows their tendencies uh, when the play breaks down, what they usually do, either either stop or or go long or come back, whatever they're doing. Uh, to make sure that the receivers are, are they both know the same route and, and the same play and they're, they're running the same thing uh, so that they can be united uh, in their purpose. Uh, the last thing uh, when we talk about members one of another uh, is right here in Romans chapter 12, those verses that I read, verses 4 and 5. And those the verses 4 and 5 speak of an interdependence. That two or more things depend on, e- on one another in order to function and survive. 
And that's true of the body of Christ. That's true of being members one of another. A Christ work was not meant to be performed in isolation. A no believer can function effectively uh, alone. Uh, we need to, to pray for one another. Uh, we need to be edifying one another uh, and working alongside one another. Let's think about football one more time. Uh, imagine you have 11 players on the field. Imagine if a, a d- defensive uh, end or a, a lineman or a, you know, a safety or whatever, uh, imagine if they decided, hey, I'm a pretty good player. I can take on this team by myself. I can guarantee you that that one man going in against 11 uh, is not going to be very effective. Uh, that, that defense needs to have an interdependence. They all need to play their part and work together in order to, to function and accomplish the role that they've been given. Uh, and so we all need one each other. Uh, if we are going to win the battle against our spiritual opponent uh, in the spiritual realm, we must function uh, effectively as one dynamic unit. Uh, interdependence, coordination are absolutely essential. And so we are members one of another, which means we are working together to benefit the whole and bring honor to the, the head. Uh, it really comes from sacrificing ourselves to Christ and helping others grow in him. So moving on to the next one, which is also found in Romans chapter 12, and this one is in verse 10. So Romans 12, 10 talks about being devoted to one another. So let's just read the first part of verse 10. It says, being kindly affectioned to one another, let me read it correctly, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. Now, uh, uh, kindly affectioned, it speaks of a, a fondness. So having a fondness, brotherly love speaks of familial relationships, a family, from the same womb, I think literally it means. Uh, it's, it's the love uh, that brothers and sisters in Christ should have for one another. It's, it's in existence. Uh, sometimes we just need to, to cultivate it uh, and to allow it to, to take over. Uh, we are born again into the family of God, and in his family, uh, there are no favorites, there's no abuse, there's no abandonment, only pure, unending devotion. Uh, devotion is not bailing out when you're affected negatively. It is a loyalty. Uh, I've read a, uh, uh, a very... Uh, a very endearing uh, article one time, and it's not the, the only, one, only instance that I've heard of, uh, but a, a wife uh, was, was engaged uh, to this gentleman, and he was in a horrific, I believe it was a car accident, and he was paralyzed. And of course, in that, that time, uh, he, you know, he was going to be bedridden. Uh, he would need all kinds of care. Uh, he wouldn't be able to go to the, the, the bathroom by himself or, or feed himself or, or any of those things. And so he, 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 he talked to his fiance and, and he said, look, I don't expect you to stick around. You have your, your life ahead of you. You're young. Uh, I, don't, you know, I don't want you to have to be tied to me. And her response was, no, I'm devoted to you. So whatever comes, I'm with you. Uh, and what a, what a picture of devotion. Uh, we are to be devoted to seeing one another be, be to grow in the Lord. And a good example is right here in Romans chapter 12 and verse 15, where it says, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with those who weep. Uh, you see, if someone's weeping, we're going to say, oh, what a baby, you know, duh, can't they just get over it? Or, or if someone's rejoicing, we say, wow, man, they must be arrogant. They always get it all. What? No, we rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We're devoted to one another. Uh, and this is where we can help one another when we are devoted to one another in Christian love, as uh, Romans 12, uh, verse 10 says. Not gossiping, not boasting, not biting, not devouring, but loyalty and enthusiasm for one another, remembering how much Christ was devoted to you. Also in Romans 12, 10, we have a, 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 a passage that speaks of honoring one another. Uh, Romans 12, 10 goes on and it says, in honor, preferring one another. To honor someone is to, to give high respect, to have great esteem for them. Actually, it, it's to show value. It's deferring to them. Uh, Jesus is obviously the, uh, the ultimate example of putting others before yourself. 
And we're probably all aware of uh, the passage in the gospel where he shows, uh, where he honors his disciples by washing their feet. Uh, Just a few verses from that passage in John 13. It says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things unto his hand and that he was come from God and went to God, he he rose up from supper, he laid aside his garments, he took a towel and he girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Uh, Listen, uh, this is is such a a very convicting uh, few verses, and especially because it starts with verse 3. Look at all Jesus had. Look at what he could claim. Look at at who he was. And here he was. he, He took off his coat. He got a towel and he served. He submitted himself uh, and showed honor and partiality and and deferred uh, to his disciples. Jesus, knowing full well that the Father uh, had put all things under his power, knowing that he had come from God, knowing that he was returning to God, he did the act of a servant. Now, I haven't put every verse, uh, every verse from that passage there, but then he asked his disciples, he asked, do you understand what I've done for you? And then he went on and he explained the metaphor and he answered his own question. He said, you call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. But now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. In other words, honor one another. We also have a good passage here in in Philippians chapter 2. Uh, where it says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Honor one another. And then it says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the, also on the things of others. Uh, so show honor by other, to others by serving them. Consider others better than yourself. We live in a self-centered society. And yet we are called, and we are, we have been created in Christ Jesus, something different. And that's to defer to the betterment of others. Uh, The greatest act of unselfishness, uh, humility, and sacrifice is Jesus Christ. We know that here on earth, he deferred to the will of the Father. When asked, he said, I came to do my Father's will. And we are called to honor one another in our words and in our actions. Another one another statement is also found right here in Romans, uh, the next chapter, chapter 13 and verse 8, and it says this, O no man nothing except to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Uh, and I'm not going to get into this but, but because I don't have time, but at the heart of the law has always been love. Uh, Even in Deuteronomy, as Moses is reminding the the Israelites uh, about keeping the commandments, he starts with, love the Lord your God. In the Gospels, when they ask, what is the greatest of the commandments? He said, the first is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, See, when when our motivation is love, and especially the love for God and love with one another, these things should come naturally. Uh, we need to, to do a, a check that our love isn't, isn't t- directed towards ourselves. Uh, what you truly love, you will protect. You will meet their needs. You will look out for their well-being. You will show kindness and fondness. Uh, our motivation factor cannot be expecting something in return. Uh, we can't, our, our golden role cannot be do unto others as they do to you. Uh, our love can't be displayed only to those who agree with us. Uh, remember, it's the love of Christ that motivates us, and he loved us when we were certainly on the other side, while we were yet sinners. Uh, and when we understand the love of God that was demonstrated and bestowed upon us while we were yet undeserving, that's what finally wakes us up to what true love is. That's when we understand what it means to love one another. When we understand the depths of God's love, how can we not but respond in showing love uh, toward others? Uh, Here's a verse 
that you may be surprised to see, but it's in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 17. It says this, But whosoever hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shuts up his bowels of compassion, or his, his heart of empathy from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? And some of you are rightly saying, well, well that's a kingdom verse. Absolutely. And there are ramifications if you read above this verse and, and below this verse. They don't apply to us. And so we need to rightly divide in that way and understand this isn't a verse to us. However, if God wanted them to love in the Old Testament, and he, if he wanted them to, to love one another in the Gospels, if he wanted to love one another in the, in the kingdom, uh, if the love of God shows love to others, if truly showing the love of God shows love toward others, that expectation did not end in grace because God's love did not change. Uh, if you are displaying the love of God, you will display love for others. As a matter of fact, if you want a Pauline verse, uh, I'll show you 1 Thessalonians 4, 9, which says, But as touching brotherly love, you have no need that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And so this commandment comes directly from God, to love one another. Romans 15, we have another uh, phrase, uh, be of the same mind with one another. Uh, Romans 15 and verse 5, it says this, Now the God of patience and co consolation grant you to be like-minded one to another, according to Christ Jesus. And actually, I could have just as easily taken you to Romans 12, 16, which says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Uh, be of the same mind with one another. We are to be on the same page. Uh, we, have, we are to be... Uh, the same mind. We are to have the same goals, be working towards the same, uh, the same end result, have the same aim. We certainly have the same commission, and it's all to bring glory, not to yourself, but to the head, to our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who makes it all possible. Uh, working together to carry out the mission that he has entrusted uh, to us. Uh, I read in, uh, I have you in Philippians 15, but in, Fli uh, yeah, Philippians, Romans 14, uh, in verse 13, we have Paul's call. He says, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in his brother's way. We talked about this a little bit on Monday, uh, Monday evening. Uh, the fact that we need to, to do a, a self-check oftentimes. Am I causing that person uh, to stumble uh, in their faith. Uh, they were, in Romans, uh, it seems that they were judging harshly on areas that were areas of liberty, uh, and this causes division. And so instead of, of, of throwing out stumbling blocks, uh, Romans 14, 19 says this, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify one another. It doesn't say, uh, let us follow after peace. It says, the things that make for peace. Uh, this call for one-mindedness and, and unity underscores and emphasizes one of Satan's primary attacks against uh, the church. And, and it's happened throughout church history. And that is to, to destroy singleness of purpose amongst Bible-believing Christians. To get them distracted on all these other issues and forgetting uh, so that we forget what the main thing is. That the commission that we've been given. Uh, Satan wants to drive people away from Christ, but we do need to keep the main thing the main thing because we all have the same high calling in Jesus Christ. And that's where our like-mindedness is. We're not to create our own like-mindedness like, hey, uh, let's see what, what our similarities are. Uh, I believe the best color is blue. Okay, well, let's get together and we'll be like-minded that the, the best color is blue. No, uh, really what it's calling us to is Christ has this mindset. He has our purpose. He has our goals. He has our responsibilities. He has our, our commission, all of those things. And we all need to set our mind on those things and not go about uh, uh, trying to create uh, this own purpose and goal and aim. Uh, the scripture tells us what it is. Uh, oh, yeah, be of the same mind one another. There, I finally put it up. But uh, also the Jerusalem church can serve as an example. Again, I understand different commission, different uh, dispensation, all of those things. But in Acts 2.46, it says this, And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, or day by day continuing with one mind in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, 
They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. Uh, what, a, what a statement. Uh, you have this one accord, this like-mindedness, uh, and you also have in that like-mindedness a, a singleness of heart, a singleness, a sincerity of purpose, and you also have joy. Acts 4.32 says, And all the believers were one in heart and one in mind. Uh, they were like-minded in their responsibilities, and may the same thing be said for us as the church, the body of Christ. Uh, now, uh, Romans 15, uh, we have the next one, uh, which is accept one another. Accept one another. I'm going to start in verse 5, uh, Romans 15, 5. I'm going to read through 7. It says, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 7, it says, Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. What I'll tell you, verse 7, we talk about accept one another, and here's what it says. We are to accept other believers just as Christ accepted us. Uh, Jesus did not accept us based on our language, based on our color, based on where we're from, based on our status, based on our age, based on our wealth, based on our, our sex, based on our, the clothes that we wear. When Jesus Christ accepted us into the body of Christ, he accepted us, each of us, unconditionally. And that's why it's so important to understand what uh, verses such as Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 are saying when, they, when they pronounce, it is by grace you are saved through faith. When, the scriptures, uh, when Paul's scriptures tell us salvation is a, a gift of God, and we do not receive it uh, by works so that we have no reason to boast. God's grace in Christ's work tells us that in order, to be, in order for Christ to accept us as we are, our salvation has to be fully by grace. To what extent does he accept us then? Well, Ephesians 1, 6 says, we are accepted in the beloved one. Uh, immediately and fully, we are accepted. We, are, we, are, uh, we stand as accepted by God as Christ is accepted. Uh, Romans 15, 1 it says, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves." Uh, it's the responsibility of the, of the mature believer uh, or the one who has been in the faith longer and has grown in the faith uh, to accept the other and to help them grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, the things that are necessary is a gentleness, is a, is a patience, is a long-suffering, is a love, uh, and an unwillingness to do that with a, a new Christian or an immature Christian um, points to an immaturity in the more mature believer's life. Romans 12, 16, uh, it says this. Uh, what does it say? It says, be of the same mind one towards another. We already read that. And then it goes on and says, don't mind the high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be, be not wise in your own conceits. It says, don't show partiality. Uh, James 2.9 says something very similar. It says this, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. And so accepting some and not others uh, is not the way God uh, intended the body of Christ to function. Uh, do not honor some uh, and not others. That's, that's favoritism. That's partiality. Uh, prejudice, favoritism, discrimination in the body of Christ rejects and alienates some Christians and accepts others. And this violates the laws of God or the, the, the heart of God. I'll use that word. Uh, furthermore, this kind of behavior violates uh, the very nature and function of the body of Christ. It goes against what we were created to be. In other words, accept uh, one another. Romans 15, once again, uh, we have admonish one another. Verse 4 of Romans 15 says this. For, uh, that's not the right one. Um, anyway, uh, admonish one another is another one. Uh, so what does admonish mean? Uh, it means to counsel, to correct, uh, to to instruct is an encouragement to rightness. 
Uh, it, is, it is really what it is, is it's, it's desiring uh, to, to, to meet someone where they are, but, but helping them grow in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to helping one another uh, become more and more like our wonderful Savior. Uh, the word means to put in mind, to reprove gently. Um, it means, uh, though it's not a casual conversation, uh, it, is, uh, it implies an area of need, uh, or, or to, to address a cause of tension. Uh, God did not give, here's another thing. Uh, God did not give the gift of admonishment. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, some of us, we hear admonish one another and we say, oh yeah, I'm really good at that. But we miss what admonishment is. Uh, admonishment is to, to, with a goal of helping people grow in the Lord. It is not telling it like it is. Telling it like it is, uh, speaking your mind, that's not a spiritual fruit. Uh, so we need to check our motivations. We need to pray. Uh, we also need to realize, okay, fine, you have a plan to admonish. Is this a scriptural decor- declaration or is it a matter of personal preference? Uh, we put on humility and meekness and gentleness. And once again, the goal of admonishment is a call to rightness. Uh, I do have a verse here uh, in Colossians 1.28. Uh, and what a, what a verse this is, because everything we do has a goal. And for Paul, here is the goal, whom we preach, Jesus Christ we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present everyone perfect in Jesus Christ. See, that's the goal of every individual. Uh, that's the goal, that should be our goal, that we be more and more like our Savior. And it also should be uh, uh, the goal of us to help others uh, reach that, that uh, pinnacle. So admonish one another. And then now we're going to turn, well, one more in Romans, Romans 16 and verse 16. It says, salute one another. And it says with a holy kiss, but uh, there is some cultural, uh, uh, we need to have some cultural recognitions here. Um, I wouldn't, I, I, please do not go around kissing each other in church. Uh, that would create some problems. Uh, But it is here to greet one another. Um, Paul closes out Romans. uh, And sometimes we we go quickly through uh, Romans 16 because it's really a list of names. But when we spend some time there, we see Paul is calling out greetings to various people. And he mentions, I believe it's 26 by name. Uh, Nothing means more to people than being recognized, than being called by name. And, And it is a social grace that takes a lot of discipline. Uh, I'm awful with names, uh, so I, I try to prepare people. Look, if I don't remember your name, sometimes, you know, my kids' names, they get jumbled up in there. Uh, and I spend a lot of time with them. So uh, please don't take it personal. Uh, it doesn't mean you're not important. It's my weakness. Uh, I have to probably work at it harder than others. Uh, but the importance here of greeting one another. Uh, but along with greeting is an importance to, to sincerity and, and sensitivity. Uh, look, it's, if, our, if we think greeting one another is just say, hey, what's happening? You know, good to see you today. Uh, th- I'm not saying don't do that, but uh, I believe it was Gene Getz. He tells of a story one time where he, where he greets someone saying, oh, hey, how are things going? And he didn't listen to the man's response. And the man actually responded by saying how, how depressing uh, his week was. Uh, and uh, thankfully... Um, one of, uh, I believe it was Mr. Getz's elders, came to him and said, look, you, you, uh, you failed. He admonished him and said, look, you, here's what that gentleman said after you, you left. Uh, and so, uh, in other words, um, when we greet one another, we need to be prepared to, to be sincere about it um, and, and to be sensitive. Uh, here's a few just points, and then I'll move on. Make sure you're already living in harmony with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Make every effort uh, to develop sincere interest in others, uh, show compassion and care, develop an honest interest, w- be welcoming and hospitable. Uh, we need to, to um, and I, listen, I understand, you know, we're not talking today about problems in the church. Um, those need to be addressed, but people should come to church feeling accepted and welcomed and greeted. Um, and if issues arise, then you, you deal with them. But uh, greet one another. Uh, moving on, there's a few more. Uh, but we're moving out of Romans now and turning to Galatians chapter 5. 
and verse 13. Galatians 5, 13, it says this, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Uh, don't use your liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And then it says, But by love, serve one another. And so that's what we have up here. We are called to serve one another. Uh, the word here, duleo, uh, it means to be, to be a slave or to serve or to obey or to submit. It's the st- <clears throat> In its strongest sense, it's a word that describes uh, someone who has given themselves completely to do another's will. And so that's what Paul has called us to to hear, a complete service. Uh, Also, the concept that Paul's talking about here, notice it also uh, in love. And so what Paul is calling them to is to deleo another in agape, to be fully serving one another in unconditional love. That's a high calling. Again, hopefully you can understand the importance of having the Holy Spirit involved uh, in these matters. Uh, In the most devoted of sense, you're to serve one another. As believers, we are to give ourselves totally to one another, to become slaves to one another. And what a contrast to, to, uh, to, to the emphasis given in modern society. Uh, both in Christians and non-Christians alike. But when we, we serve one another in love, we will meet each other's needs. And in unselfish ways, we, we're not looking for how it, it benefits us. Uh, and the results of all of this will be uh, more love among us. Uh, people will be joyful and happy. Uh, there will be a sense of peace, tranquility, and unity. Uh, we will treat one another with patience and kindness. We will do what's right in our relationships. We will be faithful uh, to one another. Uh, according to the guidelines of Scripture, we will treat one another with gentleness. We will exercise self-control so that we don't use people for our own selfish ends. In other words, we will serve one another, and in serving one another, we will display uh, a steady church. Going on uh, in Galatians chapter 6. In verse 2, uh, we have two more here. Galatians 6 and verse 2, it says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. Uh, the burden Paul is addressing here in, in the context is specifically the heavy load that weighs us down when we are in bondage to sin. But the goal, the goal, the goal is always restoration. It's always be, to be restored back to godliness and into the fellowship. Uh, and instead of judging and condemning and calling out, restore. That's what we always have to have in mind uh, when, we, when we go to, to help one another or to, dr- to, to address a burden that someone has taken on. Carry their burdens. Don't make them heavier. Uh, come alongside and, and help one another as we are striving towards Christ's likeness. I'm sure uh, that as a church, I think there's a verse somewhere that talks about potlucks. Thou shalt have potlucks. I, I don't know. It's somewhere in there. But um, by the way, if you don't get me, I'm, I'm kidding. But it seems like we love potlucks. And for potlucks, you usually have to set up some tables. Uh, and I know the, the church that I've been in, uh, we, we help one another lift the tables. One guy takes one side, one guy takes another. To bear one another's burden, let's, someone is, let's say someone is not bearing one of those light uh, plastic white tables, but they have those old uh, wood-looking ones, those heavy ones. And, uh, hey, what are you doing with that table? Well, I'm, I'm taking it over here. Well, you know what? Since you're gone that way, let me go ahead and help you out. And you sit on it. That is making their burden heavier. In order to bear that burden, you have to take the other end and help them uh, reach their goal. And that's what bear one another's burdens is. We all have the same aim of Christ's likeness, and we're to help one another in that regard. And finally, in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, in verse 2, it says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another with love. Not only are we to ca- bear, uh, carry one another's burdens, we're to bear with one another. Listen, I know this may shock some of you, but none of us are perfect. All of us fail, uh, particularly in our human relationships. Uh, how easy it is to expect more from other Christians than we expect from ourselves. Uh, to bear with one another, it means being patient with another's weakness or perceived weakness. Uh, When we are tempted to be impatient with one another, we need to think about Jesus Christ and the long-suffering that he showed to us. 
Uh, you know, following Paul's exhortation here to be patient, bearing with one another in love. We've already looked at it, but verse three of Ephesians th- of Ephesians four, verse three of Ephesians four says, "Endeavoring, make every effort, patience, forbearance, forgiveness, bearing with one another." They're not fleshly reactions, uh, but they are a deliberate act of the will. They're a decision that we make. And listen. There will be some people that get under your skin. You are a person that will get under other people's skin. Uh, but there are, there are certainly differences on ministry and, and philosophy and programs offer and, and order of service. But if we are keeping the main thing, the main thing, we are to bear with one another in love. Uh, Ephesians 5, 21, it says this, submit to one another. Submit to one another. Ephesians 5.21 says, Submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. This is a mutual submission. Uh, Again, we turn to the Lord for an example. Uh, Think of what he submitted himself to. Think of what he subjected himself to. Uh, In Philippians 2, 6 and 7, he says, it says, him who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped or or held on to, but he made himself nothing. And he became a servant of men. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He submitted himself to our good and to our well-being. Uh, Paul made it clear that all Christians, including those in authority, are to follow God, Christ's example. Imagine uh, the world we would live in if leaders would submit to the good of their citizens and citizens would submit to the good uh, as a whole. What a world we would live in. What a church we would have if we would submit uh, to the needs uh, of others. We are to love as Christ loved. We are to do nothing out of uh, selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility uh, serve others as ourself. Um, submitting to the benefit of the others of others without consideration of our own. And now I'll say finally, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11. It says this, encourage one another. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Sometimes the only times people communicate anything is when they have something to complain about, when they want to tear someone down. But even people in the spotlight, they need positive feedback. Um, Yes, we understand that all the glory goes to the Lord. Ultimately, let he that glorieth glory in the Lord. But Romans 13, 7 says, but give honor to whom honor is due. And one of the greatest encouragements God has given us is his word. Uh, Even here in 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, he already said, because God has chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. We are to build up, edify, comfort one another, not to discomfort them, not to to tear them down, but to encourage one another. And so if, as Ephesians 4.16 reveals, the church is steady as every member is working together, every joint uh, supplieth, bringing honor to the Lord, it needs to be edifying itself in love. So I realize this world is a gloomy place. It is a frustrating place. Uh, We all, uh, sometimes it just all boils up. Um, But I ask you to take, we need to take our focus off the wrongs and instead think of things that are right, pure, just, good. To focus on things above. To Consider how we can encourage someone else in the Lord today. So maybe that takes logging off this or turning off this or just taking a break for a while. But remembering one of the most important, or I'm not going to say one of the most important, but an aspect of a steady church is treating one another in love and encouragement. And so let's work towards edifying one another to the glory of God. Let's pray. God and Father, thank you for the salvation uh, that is in Jesus Christ. Uh, Thank you for uh, the security of our salvation. And then, Father, thank you for the reality of the body of Christ. This is not just a concept that 
uh, you have come up with so that we could get answers right on a test or whatever. But this is, this is a reality that exists. It's a unity that exists. It's a love that exists, a peace that exists. And Father, we are called to, to take who we are in Christ and, and exhibit that uh, toward one another. And Father, in the world in which we live, each of us are very aware it is very depressing, it is very discouraging, it is very frustrating, it, is very, it makes us angry sometimes. There's a lot of concerns, there's a lot of discomfort. And yet, Father, when we look to you, we find the solutions always. Because we find comfort, we find peace, we find purpose. And Father, may we today or this evening or tomorrow when we wake up, may we uh, find a way to be an encouragement to someone else. And may your church be functioning toward one another in a way that pleases you. Father, we can't do this without your help. We need your power, we need your strength, we need your guidance, we need your correction. And so we, we, may we be sensitive to that indwelling Holy Spirit. In the name of our wonderful Lord and Savior that we serve, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Um, <laughs> wow. One anothering. Uh, a, a real key to a, to a steady church, a steady body. Uh, in, in, a, in a very shaky and unsteady time. And uh, something that the church as a whole, uh, the local assembly, uh, each other, we needed to hear that. And uh, I trust today that, I trust today that you have been, you have been uh, challenged. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe your toes hurt a little bit. I don't, uh, I don't know. But uh, I trust that uh, you have been blessed tonight uh, by uh, this message of, of one anothering, uh, lifting up and being concerned for the, for the uh, concerns of others. And uh, keep in mind, so often we use that statement, you know, it's not all about me. And uh, in reality, as Matt has said several times, the main thing is not you, the main thing is not me, the main thing is Jesus Christ. And uh, sometimes, you know, we get our focus off of that. And we can get them on to the issues of the day, which seem so large, so overwhelming. And yet even the answer to the solution is Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I appreciate the message today and, and, the, and the gospel. Uh, the, the simple gospel, that Christ is the answer. And if you don't know him today, if you've never put your faith and your trust in him, believing that he died for you, that he paid the price of your sin, that he was buried, rose again the third day, victorious over sin, death, and the grave, raised again for your justification, I trust today that right there, right where you are, you make that decision to trust Christ, to put your faith and your trust in that finished work of Jesus Christ on your behalf. And if you've done that uh, today in your life, or the very first time, we have a little booklet that we would like to send to you, Beginning Your New Life in Christ. And it's, it's a little book that will help you get started as a believer and then also helps you to understand and, and study the Word of God. And, uh, you know, so often people say, I, don't, I started to read and I just get bogged down. I don't understand. It seems to contradict itself. And, and uh, this, this little booklet uh, will help you to, uh, to read and to understand uh, the Scriptures. Uh, so if you've made that decision today for the very first time in your life uh, and you would like to get a hold of us, uh, let us know, and we will send you this book free of charge. Uh, you can write us at Bible Doctrines to Live By, Post Office Box 564, Comstock Park, Michigan, zip 49321. Or you can call us at 616-785-3618. And uh, just let us know you made a decision to trust Christ, and we would love 
to send you that booklet. Well, that draws this broadcast to a close of night number six. Uh, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, we will be back for the final session. And uh, I will be speaking at that time and uh, drawing things to a close. But we've had a, a great week and another good night tonight. And we trust that you have been blessed. And so till tomorrow night, uh, we will say God bless you. And uh, we'll see you either here, there, or in the air.